All right, well, we're here to talk about how to get those plants you've started indoors successfully from in your windowsill to the outdoor garden. So Raymond, I know that there's a lot of questions people have, like the plants have grown up. What if they get a little bit too big? What do you do? And also, how do you harden them off to get them into the garden so they're still sturdy and strong? Yes. And then what do you do to actually transplant them? So we're going to talk about that. Okay, great. So first thing, so I know that sometimes people find the plants get too big and you can actually cut the tops off a little bit sometimes to, um, to make them uh, grow shorter again. Okay. And that makes them bushier, but you don't want to do that for your tomatoes or your peppers because they will become funny if you do that. Mm -hmm. So if you're growing tomatoes or peppers, what you want to do to get them to be shorter, mm -hmm. if it's possible, put them somewhere cooler. You could maybe even start to put them outside on the nice days we get later in the springtime. So as the weather uh, in, in later March, well, not March so much as April and May, as it gets warmer, mm -hmm. maybe we have to put them back in at nighttime if it's going to freeze. Okay. But a little bit cooler in the, in the shadier spot outside, um, that keeps them shorter and also helps them to get used to being outdoors. That's really helpful. For how long outside? Y you want to give them a couple of weeks even. Like if, if, um, if, you, if you can give them like two weeks of like coming in and out, then that gets them used to the outside temperatures and conditions and that's much better for them okay. for sure okay. a couple of things as well like when you put them into your garden you might want to put some compost right into the hole so you plant the plant into the beautiful garden bed with a nice soil but you could put some compost right into that soil like right into the hole where you plant them mm -hmm. just a handful of that just put it right in okay. and sometimes people put something called bone meal as well another really nice organic ingredient and that makes the roots grow really strong and I think we've talked a few times here about how the roots are the foundation of the plants. Like they're the thing that makes the plant strong. So if the roots can be strong, then the plant grows strong. strong okay. A lot of vegetables too, they need to have the bone meal to make them grow good fruits. Mm -hmm. It's got phosphorus in it and the phosphorus makes those, uh, those fruits grow really well. So this is a good ingredient to put into the vegetable garden, just a, 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 a spoonful into each planting hole. Okay. Uh, just one, uh, like a, a tablespoon, okay. just right into the planting hole. Okay. Now this is a kind of onion that we have here and it's got nice roots on it already. Mm -hmm. And a common thing that gets overlooked when you're transplanting is opening up those roots. So I'm gonna get you to really open this right up. <laughs> Plants aren't so delicate, you know, it's really good to, 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 to break them up a little bit like that. And that helps them to become uh, well-established in their new space. If you didn't do what Raymond's doing right now, then maybe the plant will stay like this and it doesn't spread into its new space very nicely at all. Completely compressed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's a really good yeah. thing to do for it. Just uh, okay. can you show the bottom of that yeah, there like that? Yeah. Very open opened up. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. And then once again, you can still apply your kelp to that. You can put your, your kelp right onto this, onto the root system and it makes them uh, more resilient to drought, makes them grow into the soil better. So just like Raymond's doing, all organic, so you can get that on the skin. It's no problem at all. And then put that right into the soil. One thing we'll show is that when you're transplanting, you want the soil to come up to here. Okay. So if we were planting, pretending this is the bed, we'd make a hole. Yeah. We'd put a little bit of compost in the hole. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to plant it um, right up to the same level that it was. And then just put the soil back around it. So real easy. Uh -huh. And then the last step would be to water it in really nicely. Okay. The last thing I'll say is that I know sometimes we get a lot of rain in the gardens and drainage can be an issue. Mm -hmm. So anything you can do to make sure that the plants get enough moisture right around the roots, but then that the excess water drains away, that really helps things a lot. So um, just pay attention to that. Water it in well at the beginning, okay. make the roots happy. Everything grows well from there. Mm -hmm. And the first watering, is it uh, just a soak or like a deep watering? A good deep watering the first time. In fact, sometimes people will put the water right into the planting hole with the compost and then okay. put the soil back around it. And then that ensures that the root system has, is uh, really strong. Oh, great. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's great stuff, guys. Well, thank you to each of you for helping uh, no, <laughs> get uh, into this. <laughs> it's to the yeah. Rainbow Community Garden members to say a big thank you. No. Because last year, 150 families from the Rainbow Community Garden have benefited from uh, the indoor uh, seedling start yeah. um, workshops here. And this video will be very helpful again. Thank you. For sure. If people have other questions, of course, they can always check in with us. But uh, thank you to all today and happy gardening this season. Yeah.